One of the greatest testimonies in the Bible is found in Psalm 16. I will bless God. I will set him always in front of me. I have joy, I have gladness, I have pleasure forevermore. How can you have that kind of hope and that kind of peace? That's what today's episode is all about. Welcome to Everyday Truth with Kurt Skelly. We believe the Bible is true and relevant to everyone, everywhere, every day. If today's conversation is a help to you, take a moment to leave a review or share it with a friend. Thanks for listening. Now, let's join Kurt for today's episode. Hey team, welcome back to today's podcast. We're in Psalm 16 and I'm jumping right in because I went over time yesterday and I'm sorry, but I got a little bit carried away. But I am in verse number four today. David's praying this prayer. Lord, preserve me. You're my God. You're powerful. You're my God. You're gracious. You're my God. Uh, You're the authority in my life. I love your people. Uh, This trial is teaching me things about you. You're trustworthy and about God's people. Uh, I love them. I value them. And now verse number four, their sorrows. Now he speaks about not God's people, but people that are not following God. This is Psalm 16 and verse four. David says, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. So people that follow other gods, they're just just inviting their own hurt. Their drink offerings of blood, that was part and parcel to worshiping gods like Molech or Ashtaroth or or Baal, is uh, drink offerings of blood. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. So David said, part of what my commitment is in this time of suffering and trial in my life is, God, I'm going to trust you. And Lord, I'm going to value your people. And Lord, I am not going to compromise. I'm not going to allow the question marks that trials bring in my life to cause me to explore maybe worshiping other gods or trusting other things, because that's what happens sometimes. Things are going bad in in our life. And sometimes instead of running to the only one that can be a source of stability, God, we run to other options and we begin to flirt with other loyalties and how doubly dangerous that is. And David said, I'm not going to do that. This situation in my life is going to buttress my faith. It's not going to in any way make me a compromise. I think about that passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, where the Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians, hey, your fellowship with God and, and with me as your spiritual leader is at an anemic level because you are yoking together with unbelievers. What concord has Christ with Belial, uh, the temple of God with idols? Uh, Come out from among them. Be a separate, say the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. I will receive you. I will be a father unto you. And Paul was quoting some Old Testament prophets and saying, God wants to have a vibrant relationship with you, but he's not going to share you with other gods and other loyalties. And so let this be a time of refinement of faith and refinement of commitment uh, to the one and true God. Uh, be faithful to God. Uh, the, James said it this way, that the friendship with the world is enmity with God. And I can't picture one of you worshiping Baal or Ashtaroth or, or Molech, but what are the modern Baals? What are the modern Molechs and Ashtaroths? Uh, materialism, sometimes sports and entertainment, Uh, sometimes uh, other relationships in our life, sometimes just pleasure itself. And we've got to remember that God is to occupy the seat of our affections. Look at verse number five. The Lord, so here's the, the, the antidote to that, verse number five. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. Well, what a rich way for David to testify of his commitment to the Lord and his satisfaction with the Lord. The Lord is my portion. That would be a specific 
statement that a Levite would make. Remember? Because that's what the word Levite means, by the way, my portion. So remember all the other tribes, David was a member of the tribe of Judah. All the other tribes received portions. They received allotments of land. And what David said, but I feel like I'm a Levite in in my heart, at least, because the Levite didn't get a portion. The Levite, uh, he had to live among all the tribes because he was to be the teacher. He was to be the one that represented God. And God said, you're not going to get land, but you're going to get me. And so David says here, Lord, this is not about the physical blessings. Maybe the trial in David's life was taking away some physical blessings that he had enjoyed. But no, Lord, you are my portion. Lord, I want you more than I want your provision. And Lord, whatever you give me, you're mine inheritance. Thou maintainest my lot. Lord, I'm in a position in my life that, Lord, whatever you give me, I will be content. Lord, whatever you give me is what's best for me. And Lord, because I trust you and because I value the relationship with you and the fellowship with you above all else, then whatever it is that you bring, And whatever state I am, therewith I will be content. What a great testimony David is offering. Verse number six, he goes on to to extend that metaphor. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. So the lines, the property lines, boundary lines. So David says, I look at what you've given me, Lord, and I'm grateful. I look at what you've allotted to my life. I look at the cup you've given me to drink. I I look at the portion uh, that you have given me, and God, it's pleasant. The lines have fallen onto me in pleasant places. How many times do we look at what God has given us and we complain? Uh, Lord, you didn't give me what you gave them. And uh, you gave them five talents. You only gave me two talents. And uh, you only gave me one talent. So I'm just going to bury this thing in the earth. I mean, think about the attitude. It's really attitude. Lord, you are my portion. Now, you might have more talent than I have. You might have more resources than I have. But you don't have any more of the Lord than I have. And so when the Lord is your portion, then whatever God gives you because he is your portion is what he wants you to have. And therefore, you can say, the lions are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Thank you for my daily bread. Thank you for what you've given me. God, you've been good in my life. The lions have fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. When I stop and count my blessings... When I name them one by one, I say, God, I have, you've been good to me. And then, Lord, I have a goodly heritage. Inheritance is what that means. So, Lord, you've not only been good in what you've given me, that's past. But, Lord, you're you're good in what you've promised me. That's future. But I have a good, what God's given me, who God is, what God has stored up for me. It's all good because it's all God. Well, what? Now remember, David is saying all of this in the context of some trial, some trial that has caused him to say, God, preserve me. Lord, without you, I'm not going to make it. Uh, You're my God. You're gracious. You're my authority. God, I've learned to value your people. Lord, I've learned to be content with what you've given me and to look forward to the promises that you've promised me. Well, what a, what a paradigm shift in David's thinking. Verse number seven, watch what David says about his attitude. In verse number seven, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins, that's, that's, that's the way I think, my inner thoughts and emotions, the seat of my affection and reason and, and volition. My reins also instruct me in the night season. I'm blessing you, Lord. You're teaching me. Lord, you're teaching me things about me and about you. And Lord, in those night seasons, when I can't sleep at night, it's these innermost thoughts. It's these this, this heartfelt connection with you that will inform me. 
Lord, I won't be informed by my circumstance. I won't be informed by uh, my enemy. I'll be informed by your counsel, by your word, by the stability I find in you. Uh, my faith in you will be the information that will be my resource in the darkest of night sessions. Well, what a what a what a testimony. Verse number eight, David says this. So in verse number number seven, I'm gonna bless the Lord. Verse number eight, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. So David said, in my trial, I'm keeping God in front of me. I'm staying focused on God. I've set him always in front of me. His word will be my resource. Prayer will be my opportunity. Uh, his glory will be my uh, goal. And I put the Lord in front of me. And because God's always in front of me, I'm secure. Why? Because he's at my right hand. Because his presence is real. There's nothing in your life right now that could not be made exponentially better if you had simply set God in front of you. And think about the resource you have in an ever-present, omniscient, omnipresent God whose presence is real in your life. And David said, I'm going to put God right in front of me. Too often we got the phone right in front of us. Too often we got the movie right in front of us. Too often we got the problem right in front of us. Hey, put God, make him your focus. Put him right in front of you. Verse number nine, therefore. So what is the result of blessing God and setting God in front of me and focusing upon the presence of God in my life and trusting him and valuing his people? What, what's the result of all of this? Look at verse number Nine, therefore, my heart is glad. I love that. My glory rejoices. Everything about me is, is glad and rejoices. My flesh also hath rest in hope. Boy, I have an emotional rest. I have an emotional, I'm glad. And then my body is at rest. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a physical benefit to trusting God. There's a physical benefit. I mean, my blood pressure is going down. Uh, I'm calm. I can get my sleep. Why? Because I, I'm stayed on these eternal realities. There's a God. He's accessible. He's trustworthy. He's my God. He's at work. I will bless him. See, see how David and David, and here's the result. I have a gladness. He never says his trouble goes away. He never says his circumstance has changed. No, but I have a rest. I have a rest in my spirit. I have a rest in my body. And then speaking about his body, watch what David says in verse number 10. And this is the verse I referenced at the beginning of the podcast, which is quoted by Peter in Acts 2 about the bodily resurrection of Jesus. It's quoted by Paul in Acts 13 at the famous sermon at Antioch of Pisidia, where he references the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Here's what David says, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, in Sheol, in the place of the dead, in the afterlife. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And the point that David, uh, that Peter makes when he quotes this, the point that Paul makes is that Jesus' body did not see corruption. So David is speaking prophetically here. This is a messianic psalm that Jesus, his body will die, but will not see corruption. It will not rot in the grave. But he was released from that grave after three glorious days, his body, uh, incorruptible, a glorified body. And because of that, we have hope. So what is David saying? David is saying, this trouble that I'm going through and this answer that you're giving me by uh, a renewed sense of your presence as trusting you is really just a harbinger of the fact that God, you, you'll solve all my problems uh, uh, in all my future, not just my emotional issues, not just what's up banging around in my brain, but Lord, you, you saved me spirit, soul, and body and forever and forever and forever. I will live, live in the incorruptible reality that is mine because of the bodily resurrection, the capstone of the gospel, 
Jesus Christ. Wow, what an encouragement that is. Verse number 11, thou wilt show me. Many of you have this as your life verse, Psalm 1611. Thou wilt show me the path of life. Not only in this life, God, you're gonna show me, guide me the path of life, but in thy presence. No, the path of life, the path of eternal life. Thou in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forever, forevermore. What David says is, God, I'm just going to stick with you. This trial has taught me that. And Lord, by sticking with you, I have direction. I have hope. I have gladness. I have pleasure. I have promise. I have permanence. It's all found in you. And if that's what the trial taught me, then thank God even for the trial. It's a great psalm. It's, I did a poor job explaining it, but man, go back and, and memorize a verse or two here. Think about it. All the good things we have are wrapped up in Jesus Christ and what he accomplished for us on the cross when he died, was buried, and rose again. Hope that helps. <laughs> 